Hello everyone, it's December 5th, 2022, taking a look at postseason food plots and licking branches and just seeing how things turned out uh, as we look back upon the 2022 deer season. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at some of our scrapes. Uh, one thing that I do is make sure that I put out several licking branches that uh, serve as scrapes to keep the deer and the bucks in this area. Uh, one of the things that I do uh, is manipulate uh, the area by artificially putting in licking branches. Uh, when available, uh, I do like to use oaks, uh, aspen, maple, uh, but I find that there are many things that, uh, many types of trees that will work well. So you'll notice that I put out uh, PVC pipes uh, to put those licking branches in. I find that that is a very effective way to change those licking branches every year. So this food plot is about an acre in size. It's a combination of legumes and brassicas and grains. So this area right here is made up of clover, chicory, bird's foot, trefoil, and then here we see an area that is winter wheat uh, and brassica. Uh, now most of this has been just hammered. There is very little food left at this point in the season. You will see that uh, the activity with the bucks in this area was very high. Uh, here is an example of a scrape that was hit often. Just looking at uh, a little bit of what is left of the food in this area, uh, it has been hit very hard. Here's another scrape that uh, was hit often. You'll notice uh, how hard they go after these uh, licking branches. Uh, they will break. Uh, sometimes you will have to replace them even during the season. In an area this size, I will put out around 10 licking branches and those will all end up being active scrapes. So now we're into the legume area of the food plot. Uh, you'll see that uh, very little food at this point is left. There is a little bit of clover down here uh, that hasn't been hit at this point, but uh, you can start seeing that uh, the deer are in here frequently. This property is extremely thick. Most of the property is very similar to this with a lot of undergrowth, high stem count, uh, hides the deer very well, lots of protection, uh, lots of undergrowth food for the deer, uh, which they definitely take advantage of. This is a trail that leads to that food plot. And uh, before season, I made sure to come along and clip several of these branches. And what that does, if uh, you clip them to about sh uh, shoulder height, uh, you'll notice a lot of buck activity then leading to uh, your food sources. So this is just another uh, opportunity when you've got some of these trails and some of these, uh, some of these trees that start growing over to just clip them at the right height to get the deer to start utilizing that area. So this is just roughly a hundred yard walk from that food source. And as you can see, uh, several scrapes 
leading to that area. This little food plot, which was a mixture of brassicas, legumes, and winter wheat, was one of the most active on the property. Uh, most days, anywhere from five to ten different bucks would visit this little area. Uh, it would often be a place where uh, bucks would spar, uh, certainly uh, cruising through this area looking for does. Um, but ten active scrapes in an area that might be 5,000 square feet. Uh, and this is a mixture of some that uh, I just clipped some branches um, and others uh, where I put in the PVC pipes. This one here, they tore right out of the PVC pipe. Uh, the licking branch uh, broken into several pieces is laying right there. Uh, that was the former scrape. This area has some really thick cover in it. Uh, makes the deer feel quite secure when they're in this area. Uh, opportunities uh, in this area also just open enough for some chasing. So it's a very active area where the deer, deer feel safe and they spend quite a bit of time here working these scrapes and just uh, enough food in here for a little bit of snacking as they pass through. Now I will hunt a food source uh, with archery but it's generally going to be an area that is extremely small. So here is another really small killing plot uh, that does have some really good scrape activity. This plot is probably only about 2,000 square feet in size, but has a tremendous amount of activity. Always has a lot of chasing that goes through here and a lot of deer just transitioning from this little food plot to a larger destination food plot uh, located about 150 yards away. Here is that destination food plot that I was talking about that's about an acre in size. Uh, this is also a combination of legumes on one half and then winter wheat on the other. And as you can see, the deer have this just grub right down to nothing at this point. Okay, and quickly, just one final area that has quite a bit of scrape activity as well. Uh, much of it manipulated. Uh, one of the questions I think that people might have is, why would you create this much scrape activity? And I think a lot of hunters uh, know the importance of hunting over active scrapes and how productive that can be, uh, especially during the pre-rut chasing stage uh, of the hunting season, as well as the rut stage where you'll find uh, that bucks are still actively looking for does. Uh, you can see that this area uh, has some nice rubs as well as that scrape activity. Uh, good cover in this area. This is another fairly small food plot, uh, tree stand located right there. Uh, I do not hunt large destination food plots. Uh, I will usually hunt transition zones. However, uh, areas like this can be very productive and uh, there were some really nice bucks that utilize this area frequently. This is another small food plot. Uh, one thing that uh, that I would point out with this one in terms of buck activity, uh, you're going to see a about a eight inch cedar tree that has just been ripped to shreds uh, about four feet up all the way to the ground. Uh, certainly a sign of not only buck activity but when you see a tree 
uh, torn up that is that large quite often that will be associated with a buck that is a little bit larger as well i do know that uh, there were some uh, mature bucks that were in this area based on camera footage for those wanting to see exactly how aggressive a buck can be just take a look at the tree that was snapped off making this scrape while shoulder height or about five feet off the ground is usually ideal there are instances where deer will attack a tree or make a scrape underneath a tree that is much higher than five feet off the ground This tree right here was close to six feet off the ground. Uh, another example of a tree that was close to six feet off the ground, uh, large scrape here. I do recommend that if you are going to use PVC that you change your licking branches every year. As the bucks become extremely aggressive with those licking branches, anything older than three or four months will often just break right in two and you'll end up replacing them at some point during the season and I hate to ever go back into those areas to do that type of work. So my advice is simply change those out every year. Uh, I've designed mine with two anchor points and I can quickly, uh, with one screw, remove that licking branch, put a new one in and readjust.